Hello and welcome to UTA News. I'm Andrew Knaus. And I'm Yoli Hernandez. Thank you for joining us. There was a special guest here at UTA. Gabrielle Trailer has more to tell us. The New York Times columnist David Pogue spoke here at UTA. First, speaking to several students in the Fine Arts Building, Pogue gave advice. You understand, the concept of books is you write the book once, and then you sit back and you collect checks forever. Um, and share some problems with working for the New York Times. I mean, the, one really, the one really bad thing about the job is that um, people think that because you're a New York Times writer, you're open to attack, you're a public figure, and I, got, like, I get like blog attacked all the time. Later on in the day, he spoke at a luncheon to several students and faculty. <laughs> After receiving a warm welcome, Pogue went on to talk about a few technology trends to look out for, like Skype which allows you to make free long-distance phone calls via the internet. He also put a lot of focus on Web 2.0, which are sites like Facebook, YouTube, and Wikipedia that require user participation to function. Pogue ended the presentation by singing a few party songs he wrote about technology. I'm Gabrielle Trailer, and this is UTA News. Thanks, Gabriel. We look forward to more speakers on campus. What do you get when you mix UTA students, a variety of tools, and a passion for cars? The Formula SAE team. Starting more than 30 years ago, the Formula team has been a great way for students who love cars to put their talents to the test. The group competes with other school teams both nationally and internationally. UTA has also beaten top engineering teams like MIT and Georgia Tech. Engineers make up a majority of the team. However, being an engineer is not a requirement. Alumni races are also put together for former students to come back and experience the joy of racing. The team's funding comes from companies, local donations, and even some of their alumni. We've got a lot of other team members that are, or team alumni that help the team out in a number of ways. And we've got people working at Stanley to Lockheed to people that own their own companies like Brad Sawyer. Uh, we've got very successful team alumni and they help us out tremendously. The team builds a new race car every year. Estimated expenses to build the car total over $300,000. If you're interested in film and movies, every first Thursday of the month, a UTA filmmaker is showcased at the Studio Movie Girl, located in the Arlington Highlands. The UTA Film and Video Organization presents current works of the feature films, short films, music videos, and animations through the year. Once a year, the organization hosts Underexposed, a two-night film festival to highlight the best works of the year. What effect does the economy have on financial aid? We'll tell you after the break. Tick, tick, massive tick, heat wave. Tick, 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 devastating, devastating hurricane. Tick, 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 our future tick, tick, is up tick, 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 to you. Tick. Welcome back to UTA News. Many students depend on financial aid to get through college. Tanisha Winters has an in-depth look at how the economy is affecting financial aid. As students prepare to register for the upcoming semester, all thoughts are on increasing tuition and financial aid. Although improvements have been made on campus, some students don't agree with the increase in tuition. I think it is high that it has to be raised every single semester just for, you know, new buildings or just miscellaneous stuff. They don't have to raise it so much. I understand the fees, but not like $700 every semester tuition is getting raised. To supplement higher rates, UTA recently increased the Maverick Promise. This will provide grant assistance to cover all fall and spring in-state tuition and fees for undergraduate students who have a total family income of $65,000 or less. We took a look at um, what our students were paying in tuition and fees. We took a look at knowing how difficult it is to cover that. Uh, we did some calculations to determine if it was something that we could afford to cover. And I felt like we wanted to make that, uh, to extend the promise to more students than what had been eligible for it in the past. With the current economic status, students worry if it will be harder to qualify or even receive financial aid students are considering how much they can invest in their education as well. The economy has caused an overflow of financial aid applications and have some students questioning if the money will eventually run out. 
for the latest year that we just finished, uh, total for all students in scholarships, grants, loans, work, everything together was about $150 million. At this point, we don't believe that's the case. You know, who knows what may happen in, in the future, but uh, because a lot of our grant funding, the, the bulk of it does come from the federal government or the state government, um, we do, we have no reason to think that those sources will dry up. So I guess UTA students have nothing to worry about. I am Tanisha Winters, UTA News. If you have any questions about financial aid, visit the financial aid office at Davis Hall or call 817-272 2172 for more information. School can be strenuous and occasionally students need a break. Here's Elise O'Gara with The Man on the Street. As a college student, it is a daily priority to attend your classes. But every now and then, some students may choose to take time out of class to spend time on themselves. I'm here at the University of Texas at Arlington to find out students' favorite reasons for cutting class. Uh, in the morning, sleeping. And not encouraging it, not that I do it a lot. Um, it's just to prepare for a test for the following class. But that's about it. <laughs> or unless people are in town, like friends, and you know you're not missing anything important. Um, I never cut class. <laughs> so. Yeah, if I did, it would probably be for sleeping. Um, actually, honestly, I only cut class if I oversleep or it's a work issue. That's the only time I usually skip class. Don't cut class. You hear that, everyone? What would be your best excuse for skipping class? Um, that I have an, an interview, because <laughs> then teachers can't say anything if you say you have to do something to advance your career after college. So that works, too. Whether it's going to work or hanging out with friends, I'm sure professors have heard every excuse in the book. And although school is not the only priority for many students, don't forget the consequences of skipping your classes. It may affect you in the end. To avoid cutting class, try to get eight hours of sleep a night. When we return, we'll take a look at how gas prices are affecting students and staff here at UTA. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Do you know that stroke targets by color? If you're African American, you're twice as likely to suffer a stroke as white Americans. Join the power to end stroke at strokeassociation.org. Welcome back, Mavs. Gas prices have been on a roller coaster for years. Anthony Williams talked to students about their gas use and asked if they can guess where their gas money goes. Gas. Everybody needs it, but where does the money go once you've filled up your gas tank and given it to the gas station? We have students on campus where it's all about big government or oil companies. The price of a gallon of gas has gone up and down, becoming a burden for students with low budgets. But many on campus we talked to were unaware of exactly where the money goes. I, I really don't know, to tell you the truth. Sometimes I think our country, our government's taking advantage of us. Other times, you know, I can see that they do need the money to get the gas from, you know, wherever they're getting their gas from nowadays, you know. Uh, it's changed over the years. Yeah, it was like four dollars and then all of a sudden you see it going down. Three, you know, three eighty nine, three thirty five. Now now it's down to two. I just like I said, I think the cheapest I've seen is two twenty five. And uh, but that's just because nobody's going anymore. Nobody's going anywhere anymore except to work and back. To gas companies. Um, I have no idea. <laughs> Okay. Well, business to we, those in, to, to the businesses, the investors, I guess, in the in the gas companies. Yeah. Business Week magazine worked with the online magazine Good and released a report called "Getting Gas," detailing how much money goes where and how much profits all companies are making. To the gas station, where do you think that money goes? I never really thought about that. Okay. Would you think most of it goes to government or the oil companies or? Kind of went to like. Yeah, the government, right? Seventy-two percent goes to the oil companies, and only a few cents goes to the gas stations. What do you I, think about that? I want to cuss, man. I mean, what's up with that? I mean, the good thing is that they've been declining a lot lately, but God knows when they're gonna shoot back up, and then to what heights are they gonna shoot back up to? I'm Anthony Williams for UTA News. Well, that's all the time we have today. From all of us here at UTA, I'm Andrew Canals. 
And I'm Yoli Hernandez. Thanks for stopping by.